Hi again, everyone. Mark Rogers, the voice of college football with the much anticipated, much debated uh, top 25. That actually makes sense. That must be why it's so controversial. It actually makes sense. We have thrown out perception as much as we possibly can. Is it a perfect ranking? I have never claimed it to be perfect. Never claimed that it was a perfect system. It's logical and thought out, though. It makes sense. Could you argue that number 16 should be number 13 or number 14 could be number 19? Yes, you could make that argument. There's not enough data, not enough information through four or five games to be able to determine exactly who is the number one ranked team versus number 10 versus number 20 and on down the line. Also understand there's nothing mystical or magical or perfect about 25 teams. <laughs> the 26th best team or number 26 resume in the country is not significantly worse or just completely irrelevant compared to the number 25 team. We could make a top 14, top 42, top 71, and maybe we'll do that in the future just to prove the point that there is nothing special about 25 teams. It's just a number. It could be 23, it could be 19, it could be 100, or it could be 130. Maybe we'll rank them all at some point, and we have in the past. Our rankings are based on the results on the field. The wins and the losses are king. If this were the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NHL, the NBA, then that's all that would matter because in the NFL, for example, you've got 16 games played amongst 32 teams. Therefore, the cross-section of games is fair. The schedule is fair. It's balanced. No, not everyone has exactly the same schedule difficulty, but it's so close that the standings are paramount. They are very meaningful. And therefore, you don't have to go to a judgment system. It's fair. It's objective the way it is. Just go by the wins and losses. A 7-1 and one team is ranked ahead of a 6-2 and two team in the standings. That's all there is to it. In college football, however, we've got 130 teams, and they play all levels of schedule difficulty. And they don't play each other, especially in this crazy 2020 season. Nobody's playing each other across conferences. Nobody in the Power Five is playing one another. So this has been the most difficult to rank this season because nobody's playing anybody, again, cross-conference. But it is based on the results first and foremost. A win means more than a loss, obviously. Wins and losses, number one, the results on the field. Number two, the performance on the field. Again, we need to rank and evaluate the performance. A team that wins a game 50 to 49 is going to be weighted and given more value for that win uh, at 50 to nothing than they would have at 50 to 49. If Ohio State, for example, beat Indiana on Saturday 42 nothing, that would have been weighted differently than 42 35. Would they be higher in the rankings? I don't know. That depends on the play of the other teams. That's why I'm asked constantly after a team wins a game on Saturday, are they going to move up or down? Where are they going to be ranked? Well, it depends on everybody else. All the resumes are reviewed. So point number two is the performance on the field. Number three is, of course, schedule difficulty. Who did you beat? Who did you lose to? And again, based on our second criteria, how well did you perform in that win or loss? Let's get to the top 25. That actually makes sense. And just to let you know that we evaluated and took into consideration 34 teams. We could make this a top 34. Iowa, Wisconsin, West Virginia, North Carolina State, Colorado, Nevada, San Jose State, App State, and Liberty were given consideration. But here's the top 25 that does actually make sense. 25 is North Carolina. 24 is Washington undefeated through two weeks. Number 23 is Texas. Number 22 is Iowa State. Number 21, Oklahoma State. Number 20, Oklahoma. I ripped those off quickly. They've all played each other. So another criteria is a team will always be ranked ahead of another team if they beat that team and have a comparable record. 
Therefore, we want to reward the team that won the game on the field. That's the reason they play the games, to actually rank the team higher that won the game and earned that right, regardless of what we think about the capabilities of the two teams, the team that won the game. However, at this stage in the season, we have issues because four and five teams from a particular conference have beaten each other. So we cannot stick to that criteria, so we have to go back to the resume. But we try our very best to keep teams in front of other teams that they beat if they have a comparable record, meaning the same record, of course a better record, or even if they're within one game. So again, North Carolina 25, Washington 24, Texas at number 23, Iowa State's 22. Those two teams play this week. Oklahoma State at 21, Oklahoma at 20. Louisiana's 19, Tulsa 18, Auburn at 17. At number 16 is USC. In the top 15, we've got Oregon, Marshall at number 13, Coastal Carolina, Miami's at 12, Georgia at 11. Here's your top 10. BYU, Indiana, Florida 8, Texas A&M 7, Clemson 6. In the top 5, we've got Ohio State, Northwestern at 4, Cincinnati 3, Notre Dame 2, and Alabama is the number one team in college football. They merely beat Kentucky 63-3 on Saturday. This is Mark Rogers, the voice of college football. We invite you to leave your comments below. I will respond to them. On the top 25, that actually makes sense. We've got call-in shows, team-specific live streams, and content every day. So lock it in. We'll get you set for the college football playoff right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football.